day, evangelist Rob here, prophetically decreeing and declaring. And you don't want, you're not going to want to hear this, but suffering is in the Bible, friends. The church, for the most part, has removed the word suffering and pain. Many of the pulp, not me, I should say that, but some of the pulpits in America have removed the word suffering. And everything's going to be great and pie in the sky and wonderful and nothing goes wrong. If, dude, if you got Jesus, if you really serve in the Lord, I mean, powerfully, you're anointed, you're doing exploits for the kingdom of God, you're moving in some real dunamis, you're going to get it. There are going to be times of suffering. Now, many, sometimes the Lord can prune us and bring us into the wilderness. And there are times the enemy can and does attack us because we are scoring points and we're affecting his kingdom and we're bringing the kingdom of God to the earth. Now, before I continue, be an honor if you'd subscribe to the ministry channel. Thank you in advance and hit the like button in the comment section. If you have any prayer needs, you don't have to be specific. Just but pray for me or amen. If you're in a season of suffering or great pain, please, I want to join my faith with yours. Just put, you know, you, if you want to be specific, that's all cool. You can do that, but you don't have to do that now. Let's just go into prayer. Father, you, you all over, not all over, but in your word, does it does talk about suffering. And we know suffering and pain has a purpose. You do sometimes allow it in your sovereignty. You allowed it in Job's life when you took the hedge down and the enemy, you know, sort of purged him of some pride and haughtiness. But Job got double in the end. Lord, you use the enemy sometimes as a puppet or a dog on a leash. You did it with Brother Joseph, who was suffered in a prison. He was in a pit. But friends, let me read some scripture because it is it is in the Bible. And, you, you know, these these aren't popular messages. You kidding me? I could come on here and say, you know, the Lord's going to bless you. You're going to have money and cars and ah, yada, yada. And that's that is true. The blessing of the Lord does. There is prosperity in the Bible, but we got to know the whole counsel of God. We just can't take one key and just boom, run with it, and build an entire ministry of, of that. Now, if that's someone's expression in candle and mantle, that's all good. You know, I, I shouldn't have said that. But let me read this to you. 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, it says, For this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps. Friends, the disciples suffered. Many of them were beaten. I think 11 out of 12 were, were martyred. Yeah. Could you imagine going to church and hearing a message about this? <clears throat> My God, people would leave in a depression because no one wants to suffer. No one wants to go through pain. You know, I'm talking about Paul getting beaten with rods. This other dude's getting dipped in hot oil. Peter's getting crucified upside down. You're talking. This was You think this is persecution? Because, you know, someone called someone Jesus freak or you love Jesus. You're talking about the arena, what they caught, they roll these, and lions come in, and they're eating Christians, and then they're taking the heads of Christians, putting them on lamps, putting their heads on fire. Come on, can we just stop this? There's no persecution. In America, there's persecution. You want to talk about China or some of these countries where if you're a Christian, the price you have to pay to just say you're a follower of Jesus Christ? And people think there's persecution and suffering in this nation. You got to be kidding. Stop it. Let me read more scripture to you. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, 1 Peter 3 verse 17. For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than evil. For Christ suffered once for sins. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh... Arm yourself also with the same mind, for he who has suffered in the flesh is seized from sin. Let me just read this last one before you go. I get to break the depression off you, because it is it is true though, man. Come on, it's right in here. Fe uh, one Peter chapter four verse twelve. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, as though some strange thing happened to you. 
but rejoice to the extent that you partake in Christ's sufferings. I mean, man, it's all in here, man. I mean, my God, I do have some shows on YouTube called The Sufferings of Christ, Part 2, 1 and 2. They don't get that many views. People don't like, they don't want to click on them. So, Lord, we're asking you to strengthen us. Sometimes you can and do bring us into the wilderness where you purge us. You did it with Jesus, Father God, where Jesus was baptized and the heavens opened. And then immediately the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. We suffered in the wilderness. The devil was trying to kill him and to harm him. He fasted and prayed. And he overcame with the word of God. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And Lord, sometimes the devil can and does attack us. There is actual warfare in the heavenlies over our life if we're anointed and appointed. That's why you told us to gird our loins and gird ourselves in Ephesians 6. Put on the whole armor of God. So friends, just a little encouragement here. I don't get down myself. I don't know what kind of encouragement this is, but if you're suffering or in pain or you're in the midst of a trial or you're in the wilderness, friends, the Lord's not going to leave you here. Hallelujah. I just got the breakthrough myself. The Lord's going to take you out of the wilderness. The Bible says when the enemy had nothing on Jesus, he left him for an opportune time. And then it says, Jesus left the wilderness, headed for Galilee, armed with the power of the Spirit. So you're coming out of the wilderness, hallelujah. You're going to be armed with the power of the Spirit. You're, that's what the suffering and the pain produces greater glory, greater anointing, like the crushing of the anointing of the grapes, where the wine comes, where the Lord crushes and the anointing is through brokenness and suffering, hallelujah. There's a great anointing and a presence and a glory that's going to come on you after you've suffered and you've been through some pain, hallelujah. You're going to get the prize. Hey, if you've never been born again, Jesus said you must be born again. He does come by invitation only. The most moral person cannot earn salvation or outdo what God's done. It's a gift. And it's by grace and grace alone. Hallelujah. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for being my Lord and Savior. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord bless you. Subscribe to the channel. It'd be an honor. Hit the like button. Comment in any fashion. Blessings. Amen.